Hi guys. Hello guys. Welcome this? to Newbie Prepping Campfire Talks. I think this is episode five, maybe. Yeah. It's been a long while since it has uh, we've been a done our yeah, it's been a long while. Our chat. Uh, um, just uh, personal circumstances and yeah, uh, indeed, which yeah. uh, life took over where we couldn't commit to come out uh, even just for like twenty minutes. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of life changes, uh, which uh, you might be able to tell from the backdrop here but we're not in a forest this time and we don't even have a fire going no. but we can just pretend maybe I'll put like a little gif of a fire just under here yeah, that'd be all right. just, just, yeah just, just right in the up. middle yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to animate some smoke going into my face as it always does uh, but anyway yeah so I'm Rich and this is Mark as you should know by now how you doing Mark how right. you doing Rich uh, <laughs> don't ask I know tell me about it anyway so basically um, Life circumstances have uh, forced me to move back over to England. For those that don't know, uh, we're in Northern Ireland at the moment, but uh, I'm going over to England. Um, and so I thought that that would be a perfect um, topic uh, because what we've uh, discussed is still staying in the group, um, but being in a group in two countries essentially uh, separated by this stretch of water. So we're trying to, we're, we're thinking. A good topic to talk about is yep. uh, uh, prepping over a long distance, yep. or getting your group, getting your group together, uh, even though you could be miles apart. Yeah, uh, <laughs> whether it's a body of water or just a very long stretch yeah. of land. Either way. So it's just a, a basically it comes down to your main topics. What we always say is about planning. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you're uh, going to be separated over a last uh, a large uh, distance of land. Uh, you plan for it uh, and work out, you, uh, make sure you've got the skills uh, mm -hmm. to overcome anything that could be a barrier. Indeed, like uh, with, um, I, I'm quite lucky in my uh, in my circumstance because in pretty much any scenario, um, I'm gonna uh, be coming back to Northern Ireland anyway. And Mark knows how to sail, so he's essentially just going to be picking me up somewhere. I won't tell you where. Um, but we can't take too many people. Can't take too many people. So yeah, uh, if people watching this video, you can't know. Sorry, but but, but now, now the plan is you're gonna laugh at this. Right? When I go sailing over on my little rubber dinghy, uh, I'm gonna be taking my Viking shield with me. So I'll be going up a river with a Viking shield on the prow of my boat. Right? So Rich knows it's me. So if <laughs> If the worst happens and you're by the river and you see this little rubber dinghy going along with a with big shield on, shield. that's Mark. <laughs> and if you see it with two shields, that's Mark and Rich coming back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you see, if you happen to see that. Don't don't, don't try and attack stones. us. Don't throw yeah. stones. So uh, just uh, appreciate it. What well, uh, you know, it'd be something to laugh at in this horrible, horrific, yes. uh, post-apocalyptic society that will obviously be going on at the time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, if you say you was up in Scotland, and that's going to be your base camp, and one of your members is down in Devon, which is miles away, so you got to plan how to meet up or get back together. So obviously, it'd be the person down in Devon. Now we always have the rule of three, so our three ways of getting from Devon to Scotland. So with uh, myself and Rich, we're going to have three ways of Rich get into the location of where we're going to be, where I'll be going to be coming across by boat. Yeah, uh, we'll have three different landing positions depending on the circumstances. Yeah, uh, and obviously we'll have three ways of getting back once we come across the sea uh, back over to Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, Unfortunately, so, in that way, in that regard, the weakness is kind of needing the boat because even though we'll have three ways, uh, both while in England and while yeah. in Northern Ireland, the boat is the clincher. It is, yes, it like, is the boat. So, so got, it is a lot easier someone being in Scotland than the other yes. person being in Devon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you are relying on the boat unless you swim, yeah, or find a seahorse to ride. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it will be. Uh, those sort of methods. Now, if we can learn to fly, we could try and acquire 
find uh, half inch helicopter from uh, some local established tree because obviously none of them would be around at the time. Uh, you can find an aeroplane if you can know how to uh, uh, fly one then you know. Uh, but obviously for our method it would be a boat because that's one thing what I, I can tell and it won't take much to teach Rich how to be a uh, ship's mate. Yeah, just, uh, just yell at me instructions and that'll be fine. Yes. Well, yeah, like... And he's one of his characters in the D&D what we play was Seaman Staines. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, some people will remember, uh, some people were close to, uh, out of group, uh, we'd do the D&D &D and that. They will, they will find that very, uh, they will find that hilarious when you mention that. Yeah. Um, if you really want to know, just don't worry about it. <laughs> Anyway, how do Just we have leave a, leave a little message down below. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do, how do we? We haven't got a long list, but it's on my phone, and uh, so which is it Which has got a really worst. bad memory, iPhones and he can't remember the list. iPhones are the absolute worst. There's That's no buttons. Camera. Yeah. How, how do you? Right. It's it's a phone. You just press the button. Oh look. Piece of crap. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's working. <laughs> the audience agrees. <laughs> well, so. By the way, you might hear some voices. Obviously, I've got my little girl. As you know, she's seen her from time to time nicking stuff for me. She's actually going through one, through one of my uh, little boxes full of stuff. Uh, I've got my good lady wife as an audience. And we've got uh, a loyal friend and su uh, subscriber and follower here as well. Yay! They're a bit shy, but sent for this little one. So no. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Communications. Yes. Um, again, uh, it kind of depends on, uh, again, uh, where your uh, uh, groups are going to be. Yeah. Um, because what we said uh, we could do is just by having the radios um, and like when you switch yours on whenever you get uh, close to land yeah. so so obviously depending on the situation and it does depend on the situation if there's a build up uh, we can turn around and say right Rich it's time for you to come over get the next flight over and it saves all of us stressing about meeting up somewhere because Rich will just fly over with his family and some others who will be joining us uh, so they would all come over, they'd be here, we can pick them up from the airport, and then Bob's one. Uh, we're all together. And then we'd be joined up by other friends in their community. Now, if you don't have that luxury of time, and quite often you don't have that luxury in certain circumstances, uh, you have to come up with a plan. So if your mobile phones are not working, because you know electrical grid or solar flare or is taking out electrics, uh, you go by the pre-planned uh, uh, plan what you've got uh, and you go by a set date so you know it uh, it was going to take me longer to travel from where we are to get across the sea to get to that point than you traveling from uh, Liverpool or Birmingham to the location so if you know it's going to take me three months to get to you for argument's sake and it only takes you a month to get to the location then you know you set out two months after day one because uh, day one I'll be setting up to come to get you if that's the plan mm -hmm. so you should roughly be getting to the same location at the same sort of time and then you'd have your walkie talkies which have, uh, they would have a, li a limited amount of range but as long as you know uh, the plan is you turn them on from this date onwards it saves battery life on your, uh, the radios uh, and you just keep them on at a certain time uh, and mm -hmm. you keep them on for five minutes, then you do it again uh, either four or five hours later at set periods of time throughout the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that's a way you can actually meet up uh, and know that you're nearby. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, if you were to watch a Hollywood movie about this um, sort of thing that Mark's talking about here, um, Normally, uh, one of the points of tension in the movie would be, uh, oh God, we can't use the radio too much because it's going to run out of battery. But uh, you get a radio that's got a good battery and a rechargeable one. And assuming you're a prepper, you would have 
you would likely have one of the uh, solar panel things there as well, mm -hmm. so you can even charge it up during the day. You know, just to make sure that it's working, uh, so that whenever you switch it on, it's going to be fine, and like, yeah, you're not going to be worried like one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood dumb, dumb American Holly, mm. Hollywood movies where uh, you know oh, we can only have it on for so long there's only limited amount of battery you'd have some <laughs> kind of way of charging it up yeah uh, so for me it would be either the worst case scenario would be walking uh, so you go on the fact that you didn't be walking mm. you know because that would be the worst case that for both parties uh, the best case would rather be you've got a car you can get to the coastline get in the boat, get across. So you have the worst case scenario, because, and that's what you go by. Should we bother meeting back up? Well, only you can really answer that question, you know. Uh, I mean, if one person's going over to America, yeah. maybe at that point, it's probably not worth it, uh, trying to meet back up again. Yeah, it depends on where you, you split up, uh, and how far the distance is. Uh, but generally, it's always better in numbers, you know, and if you've got uh, some of your members not with you, you're going to be weaker than if, you, if they're with you, mm -hmm. you know. So trying to regroup uh, would be a good uh, strategy for you to have. Because, uh, yes, you could always find someone along the way and do you trust them? You're going to be sharing if you're going to share your stuff with them. You know, you're going to be inviting them in, into the community of prepping. Uh, and you just, when there's a lack of food, yeah, people do the stupidest things. Yeah. Or they become more selfish. Uh, and they don't really care about others as long as they're okay. So you've got to bear all that in, uh, in your mind. Do you take someone else in? Uh, because obviously it's a, a, going to be a drain on your food source. Uh, will they contribute? Are they willing and willing to do what's necessary? Build their own house or build their own shelter, uh, or are they just going to be sponging off you all the time? And that even goes for friends as well, not just people that you meet along the way. Um, you may want to try and bring friends with you uh, uh, because you're going to meet up uh, with a group of like-minded people that are. Uh, preppers as well so you know that that area is going to be safe and you might think of bringing your friends but even if you do trust that friend like there's still going to be a drain on your resources mm. and uh, really like, you, you can't take you can't handle that uh, you can't be uh, uh, helping them and uh, splitting your resources with them because uh, yeah it's just a bad idea in general um it's it so if you do go like me going over to england um my plans would very much be my own plans and uh, uh if uh, any of my friends did want to come with me then they would have to prove that they're up for the task by actually doing it themselves like uh, uh, do, uh you know doing the whole prepper thing themselves is what i mean mm. like getting their own equipment and uh, showing that they're actually devoted and committed to, uh, to coming along with me and i do have one friend that um seems as though he would be willing but uh i won't lie and uh sorry to my friends who uh, do watch this uh, but um i'm afraid if it did come to it then i don't think i could take you along with me because uh as much as i love you um uh, it's it's a drain on my own resources when you've had a, every opportunity to get your own and um, that may seem harsh but uh, wouldn't it also technically be harsh to uh, uh, expect uh, stuff from me when you haven't build, built up your own uh, supply of things there you go so uh, that, that's probably a yeah. bit of a low note but uh, I mean it's well, true and you've got to think about yeah, that you do and uh you got to, when you, when me and Rich were building up our community, uh, there was even, the, at the time, there's some family members which is, are questionable uh, to bring in. Uh, are they going to work? Are they going to do what's going to be done? Are they going to build enough supplies for them to be part of the group at the start? You know, because that's, that's the key thing. 
because if we if the worst case scenario happens and there's no proper uh, society uh, like uh, law uh, law society where there's uh, police in the streets and stuff like that and you've been going for like three years you know in that three years things would have changed you would have started planting crops and growing stuff you'd be going out hunting uh, so you can people are going to be learning new skills so that's fine for anyone to do that but it's that time from the start to that point and uh, I've got uh, here and uh, some stashes uh, around uh, about two years supply uh, which I know uh, I've got and that's for my family I've got slightly extra for extra people I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in because I know they probably won't bring as much uh, but that supply what I've got needs to be uh, there to, uh, for me to set up other stuff if I'm by myself now yes uh, creating a little homestead somewhere and uh, digging the turf over and planting stuff. More people means less work, so you do get things done quicker and you can plant a lot more. But you've got to bear that in mind that you've got to weigh up bringing someone in. Yes, it would be a benefit for you, uh, but also it would be a drain for you if they don't bring stuff as well. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, it's one of those balancing acts what you have to really consider yeah. uh, and talk to uh, everyone uh, that you want to have in that community, even if they don't really believe in what you believe in that, you know, zombies are going to rise up from the ground, or the aliens are going to invade, or there's going to be a pandemic. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, things do happen. Uh, and uh, I'm sure when we started this channel, uh, there'd be loads of Ukrainians out there who didn't think they'd be at war with Russia. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And we wouldn't have gone through a pandemic. Uh, mm. There wouldn't be floods in India, which flooding away, uh, flooding crops away. There wouldn't be a food shortage in some countries. Uh, monetary collapse. Oh, we've mentioned all this in past episodes. About uh, how it could happen. Yeah, how it could happen. Well, things are happening, and the polar shift is still happening. Uh, so all this is happening there's been snow in Texas mm -hmm. uh, last year mm -hmm. uh, which caught loads of people by surprise so there's always circumstances what you have insurance for your house just in case of burglaries or you burn the house down so why not just spend like a hundred pound on a backpack and some bits and pieces and store up you know 20 pounds worth of pasta a lot of pasta. Yes, you're going to be eating pasta for months, but it's like 30 pence for a kilo of pasta. Do you know what I mean? You've got plenty of supplies just by spending 30 pounds, and it lasts for ages. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then we'll go uh, go properly towards uh, um, helping uh, yeah. with, you know, just. Uh, if you do, if you do have a proper friend or something that someone like me that uh, wouldn't want you coming on along, coming along with them, uh, because you haven't done any sort uh, of preparation, then at least then maybe you'll be able to barter your way in mm. and say, "Oh, look, I can <coughs> provide this," and how you may even might even have some skills that uh, would be useful. Um, so if you're being a prepper without even knowing it, uh, for example, my my sister is a nurse now. Um, uh, recently qualified, and uh, she's uh, pretty much a, a show in to be joining us. Uh, uh, not that she uh, wouldn't be in the first place, no. but uh, I mean, it's going to be very handy. She's, it, there's more benefit for mm -hmm. her having her in now uh, yes. than there was three years ago, mm -hmm. or four years ago, before she went down that path. That's right. you know? And it's uh, actually puts it more as a more of a foundation. Is all. Uh, we won't overcome any obstacle to get Rich and his family over now, mm -hmm. you know, because the benefits of having a nurse outweigh uh, not to have them now, you know. Hold on, so are you saying you wouldn't have pulled out all the stops to get me over there if it wasn't for the fact that my sister's a nurse? No, I'm not saying that. 
Is he saying plan, that the plan was James is nodding. The plan was for us both to go over and get your family, if I remember rightly. Aye, ah, okay. I believe was you. that was that not the plan? <laughs> was that not that the was plan? the plan? There okay, you go. okay. But what I'm emphasising is, if someone's got a set a set skill, uh, you got to think. Yes, we want that skill in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you pull out the stops to get that person. Now, if someone is in the community that I know, what well, could be a part of the community, uh, he's just muscle. He lives in London, he watches this, he's just muscle. So yes, he would be <coughs> an asset for a brawl, uh, doing bits and pieces around, lifting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but would I go out my way? Probably not. You know, and, sorry. Uh, because the risk of something happening to me or Rich to go down there just to get someone who can lift stuff, mm -hmm. well, we can get a pulley and three of us, you know, get a lever and lift stuff around. Exactly. You know, yeah. so you got to weigh up those type of things. Oh, yeah. uh, now, if we uh, grabbed my son and was covering up with my son, well, for me, that's more of a priority to get him over. Yeah. You know, yeah. because he's got my son with him. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to weigh up the priorities and how much you want that person there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you, uh, if it would be a massive benefit having them, then yes, it is worth it. It is worth uh, doing like this cross ocean or um, uh, cross ocean prepping or this like, uh, you know, uh, loads of very far distant sort of prepping. It is worth it uh, if uh, you, you've got people who've got the skills and, and generally even like uh, it, even like because maybe some people might now be thinking like, uh, well, uh, your sister being a nurse is like definitely probably the most important out of any of you. What, like, what are you bringing to the table? And it's like even yeah like yeah like uh, people might be thinking that of me and it's like well even just like the mindset and the uh the skills acquired from being a prepper and like uh, being a bushcrafter it's you're already a step above uh regular right, i'm gonna answer that one right very easily right out of the community what we've got yeah you're the only one outside of this these chairs yeah. right, who built a shelter from scratch mm -hmm. and you've done that and it was a really good shelter which yeah. you can find the link for that one yeah yeah uh, we'll put it up in the corner there. and I've had people comment about that shelter and it was a good shelter so he's built a shelter so I know that when we're in uh, the forest or wherever we are I don't have to supervise Rich he can build a shelter on his own you know and he this it took uh, over about eight hours, I think it was, what you did, over a period of days? Uh, well, yeah, about six hours just full on work, but um, uh, it was kind of a big shelter anyway, and I changed it like halfway through at some point. Making excuses here, but still, yeah. I could do it a lot quicker now though. But again, the more times you do it, the quicker you get, mm. you know. Uh, so, his next shelter, he would know the pitfalls what he made last time, and make probably change uh, some bits but make an equally good shelter in less time. So if he does it in like an hour now, yeah, and I've done my one, we can start helping someone else who's not really done it, but we want in the group. Mm -hmm. So people start getting their shelters down. So for me, Rich is an asset to have in, as part of the group. Now, I'm the other thing, I'm old, right? Uh, I might not be able to carry as much as I used to be able to carry, uh, so am I benefit to it? I've got the knowledge. Well, not much of a knowledge, but I've still got a bit of the knowledge. I mean, I am you, you've got like the one most important bit of knowledge uh, for our, like for this entire thing, like which is the topic of this video, and that's the sailing knowledge. <laughs> okay, like, I'm the sailor. So, so don't die. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't, I'm I won't staying in England because there's no other way I'm getting back. <laughs> You've seen me coming up with a little waft. Yeah. I am running ground. <laughs> <laughs> Got shipwrecked. Yeah. Oh dear. Don't get shipwrecked. Oh well. Don't worry. So where best to live? Um, uh, because uh, obviously I'm the one that's considered to be moving away because I want to come back to Northern Ireland in the event of a scenario happening and. Assuming, of course, I can't just get a plane or a ferry, 
um, uh, where would be the best to live um, in order to you know get over and meet up with Mark I mean of course you could easily just say oh well uh, the, the coast of Wales maybe because then uh, you wouldn't have any distance to travel at all but at the same time I do kind of want to live my life uh, and um, th Scotland. I, I will be pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but where I'm planning on going I'm going to be pretty much landlocked in England uh, so um, knowing that uh, knowing that it's going to be whereabouts where I work uh, I want to move somewhere that's like near to a river preferably a river that leads all the way to the coast well, um, all rivers lead to the coast ah yeah oh yes yes <laughs> but hey um, uh, one that uh, what I mean Go by that is direction. one yeah, yeah, the right direction and one that you can actually traverse that. Yeah. Because they can get pretty small and windy and horrible. Going, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, basically, you can, uh, you, that all comes into your planning. So, obviously, no one knows where their job's going to take them. You know, so <laughs> you, you've got different mo methods of transport. You know, by road, uh, by water, uh, you've got the canals which would, would always be a good way of tra uh, travelling because uh, they, they, the canals in England cover vast distances all the way from uh, like from one end to the other end mm -hmm. you know so uh, that would be a good method of transport and yeah, yeah. you know there would be less people around canals I think uh, Indeed, yeah that's why I brought up the whole thing about like rivers and canals and just basically stretches of water because if it did get to a point where there were like marauders on the road uh, then maybe going down a river or a canal yeah. would uh, make it, make you not meet quite so many well, bad people because they're mm. not expecting people on boats to be going yeah so and it's less noise if you're driving a car a motorbike or you know a port of bike you make a lot of noise people can hear you coming uh, but just like if you're in the canoe or a raft or a small little boat you're just you know canoeing down the river there's hardly any sound and yeah. if someone's in the house like, 100 yards away they probably wouldn't know you're going past yeah. you know yeah yeah. Uh, yeah obviously the only time when you have to be uh, um, concerned is going under bridges because obviously mm -hmm. someone could just uh, yeah. chop something over the top of course uh, yes but that would be a good form of uh, transport is mm -hmm. going on the canals or rivers ah yeah yeah uh, it's certainly even marginally more stealthy than a car, but uh, yeah. probably a car would still be the best thing because the amount of ground you cover is yes. far more, yeah. uh, it's more efficient, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. But hey, yeah. there's a it's always best to have the option though yeah. to get, go to a river and go, get a boat. So when you're planning your uh, journeys, there's an excellent uh, website, uh, Ordnance Survey, Survey Maps. Ordnance Survey Maps? Yeah. Uh, OS maps uh, and you can plan your route and you you just plot exactly where you're going to be going and it tells you how many uh, kilometers or how many miles and the time average and I think it does like uh, it's a three minute mile uh, but you can uh, change that to a four minute mile or five minute mile now don't forget you're gonna have a lot of gear with you if you're just walking so do bear that in mind because obviously going uphill will slow you down you know going downhill speeds you up mm -hmm. uh, so when you plot your route you can plot walking uh, it, it does canoeing up rivers you can do uh, driving or horseback riding you know it, it it tells you how long these journeys will take so I can plot from where we are now all the way uh, to the uh, Irish Sea that would tell me how long in hours that was going to take. So you would generally walk about 10 miles a day because uh, obviously you'd have to set up a little camp and you carry in the backpack. Uh, and that would be about four or five hours, you know, uh, carrying all your gear, mm -hmm. you know. And then you can judge how long it's going to take you uh, by the time it's going to take. Then obviously the crossing over and then meeting up. Uh, so my idea would be I'll uh, have a sail across to Scotland first of all, and I'll work my way down 
uh, the coastline. For me, it would be a lot safer but, uh, if the weather did turn, I could pull in to a small river or into find a little harbour of some kind uh, to try and take shelter. Uh, I think, yeah, because just going straight down the Irish Sea, I mean... Uh, it's a lot, it takes a lot more navigating. Yeah. Obviously, uh, I did think about uh, going across to Isle of Man, and uh, also do like a hopscotch type of thing. Go to Isle of Man, then go over to, uh, to I think, Wales or to England, and up the Liverpool way. Uh, so, it's a good way of planning your route, so you can know the distance that you've got to cover. And you can work out, well, that sapphire will get day one, that sapphire will get day two. So in your planning, uh, you know from Bristol to Liverpool, yeah, it will take you X amount of hours, what equivalent to like uh, three weeks uh, of you traveling. Uh, you can do that same journey by car in a day, which is great. But obviously, if the roads are accessible, you know, if there's not already cars broken down or abandoned or, you know, to exactly it, yeah. be clogged up. No, I'm not clogged up. Do you want some? I'm alright, thanks. Advantages of being in your back door, uh, in your back garden. Yeah. <laughs> and we are actually in the back garden, not in the forest. Okay, be yeah, careful. That's right. <laughs> but, okay. Right, yeah. it over there for uh, sorry about that. I have my little one just wants to get her debut on screen. Uh, so yeah, so yes. it, it's a good map, a uh, good uh, facility to use. Mm. Right, so I did mention that I've got supply drops. Now, the original plan was I was going to go over and try and get my son. Uh, and so I'd already preempted and I've Done little supply drops and uh, just like a tube. Uh, uh, tubes are about uh, four inches wide, four, four or five inches wide by foot long. And it's just got like pasta in there, some sauces and stuff that I can just make some food up with. So I've got little food drops. There's uh, flint and steel in there so, and some, some stuff to make fire. Uh, and it's just, just bare essential so I if anything happens to my uh, kit I can get to these and every third one there's an extra knife uh, in one of them and these are just around on a uh, secret route what I've got uh, and now uh, now obviously Rich is going over to England now mm -hmm. uh, we'll do the same sort of thing have little, little, these little supply drops where we can uh, have a, a route or two routes uh, have a route or two routes uh, of supply so if it's going to be going along the river we can along the river somewhere we can have a little supply drop yeah yeah you know? uh, if we're going by road up over a hill with bushes we can have a little supply drop where we know yeah, where these are we know they, uh, we know we're going to pass them and yeah. do a few dry runs as well make yeah. sure that uh, yeah. it's easy enough to collect them and everything but yeah, um, having spare equipment in a supply drop, I yeah, mean, it's perfect. Handy. Just in case you need to abandon all of your stuff and just run, um, at least you know that the next supply drop you come up to will yeah. have some equipment. And it's going to be the journey what you're going to be doing anyway. Uh, so if, for example, you're on your way to your next point uh, and you get some people wanting to make, uh, take all your gear, yeah, they take the gear, they run off the plate. You stop. So you get people who might want to take your gear. Uh, they'd be more interested in the gear, uh, and you go to just dump your gear. They'll be after that, and you go. You get to the next point, and you've got some bare essentials, and you know, right, the next one. And this is all, maybe all of these drop-off points will be in your head. You're not going to have any plan, map or plan where these are. Uh, but it's got to be a location what you know and you better get to, you know. So that's why planning again comes into it. Plans can change. Uh, obviously, we're planning you being in one location. Mm -hmm. uh, your job could take you to another location. So you just have to again reroute everything. So mm -hmm. if plans change. Uh, you could decide that you come back over uh, with the family in a few years. So mm -hmm. it would just be me trying to get over and get in my son. Uh, so yeah, so plans do change, mm -hmm. uh, 
but the overall plan of being together, you know, would make you stronger. So that is something that you want to always try and yeah, stick to. Exactly. Uh, even though I am moving over to England, the, this group is just enough to make me want to, you know, risk the hardships of travelling, which uh, uh, as a prepper um, uh, I've thought about and even said in a few videos that I would always just want to stay put, like f live in a place and find a place to, you know, bug out to and stay put. But uh, I'm willing to risk traveling uh, specifically so that I can be with this group. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, the, the plan will always be the same uh, to, uh, to hook up with these guys eventually. Um, and I will say, uh, like, job potential could take me anywhere in England, but uh, I will still aim to be uh, in certain locations. Um, I won't say exactly where, but uh, 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 there are places which I will uh, not go to uh, because it will just make it too difficult. Um, because, uh, hey, like uh, I don't want people in the comments saying like, uh, oh, uh, you're advocating all this prepping and stuff and like making things easier for yourself and yet you're moving all the way to the opposite side of England, making it so hard for you it to meet up. For us, to show that we can do it. I suppose, yeah, but like, if, if it came to it, I... I would prefer least challenge <laughs> yeah, possible. Probably. So um, yeah, uh, I will be uh, intentionally living uh, in certain places and I definitely won't be going to a city. Uh, if I do happen to work in or near a city, then I will be living in a small town outside of said city. Um, because yeah, there, there is certain places you just don't want to go. Uh, and uh, that, that's the rules that I've lived by here in Northern Ireland. Uh, same with Mark and uh, that's the rules I will live by um, over in England as well. Like, luckily, the place I'm going to now, the city isn't that big, and uh, the place where I'm going to be staying at isn't uh, in the city itself. Uh, it is on the outskirts, so it still makes for an easy bug out. But uh, now I will be uh, making sure that uh, I, I move to a place that is in good standing, so that if it, if it does all hit the fan, then me and Mark will be able to meet up. Like, don't get us wrong, man. we're not saying living in the city is the worst thing, mm. okay? Uh, for me, I'm not sure uh, I'd say for Rich, uh, being in the city would cause more obstacles and more headaches trying to get out mm -hmm. because there's so many people. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the population of Northern Ireland is uh, over, what, three million something. Uh, Two million? Is it only two million? Well, I've been, uh, my friends just said it's two million, but I thought it was three million, but two or three million. The population of London is something like almost seven million now. So, so London is like 25 miles diameter, so it covers like, <coughs> it's a large place, but you've got seven million people. <laughs> Everyone would have a lot more space if they all lived over here. But, we only got like two to three million over here. So if you think of seven million people in a in like a 50 mile radius, like just like 50 miles that you got, there were so many things that could go wrong, mm -hmm. you know? And obviously the same will go for like Birmingham and Liverpool, Manchester, uh, all the major cities. I've got so many people. And when things would go wrong, it, it's the basic things again. It's people's uh, greed, or they they do things what they wouldn't normally do, uh, as you saw in the old movie Blackout, what we recommended. Uh, the young uh, the guy who was a prepper, uh, he was doing the YouTube channeling, mm -hmm. and he didn't want to use his generator because people would know he had a generator, mm -hmm. you know. So he didn't plan on that. And in the end, he actually uh, went in and started stealing food because he had been robbed. And he done a video saying, "Look, I will pay this back." I'll, you know. Mm -hmm. So people do change or do things what they wouldn't normally do under certain conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's what happens. That's human nature. They will try and look after their own uh, family first, mm -hmm. and they will do strip things. And if you're there trying to get out and you've got a backpack. People are going to think 
he's got food in there, he's got supplies, we grab it and it, it's, you know. it's that age old uh, phrase of prevention is better than a yeah. cure, like prevention obviously being outside of the city at the time rather than the cure, which is like like uh, being in the city and then trying to escape, mm. it's like prevention is better than the cure, that's yeah. why I would, I, I would rather stay away from the city, like obviously um, Living in a city is good, like during peacetime, if you want to call it that. But uh, uh, well, depending on who you talk to, uh, if they would say it's good or not. But now, um, uh, generally, people with a proper mindset, like myself, like they just would gravitate away from them. And for for all of the problems that Mark just mentioned, and yeah, Blackout, you've got to see that movie. Um, it's so many, so much nuance, so much just describes perfectly what could happen. And yeah, just just watch it. You don't even need to hear more from us about it. Uh, if you do want to hear more from us about it, there we do have a uh, video review which uh, is up here or up there or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the main topic. Yes. Really covered. Yeah. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Mm -hmm. uh, or we'll... uh, or thoughts and opinions, yes, just in general. Yeah. yeah. So now this is like the ad lib side of things. Yeah, uh, talk, talking about more recent events. So if you're watching this like two years in the future, um, it might be nice listening to yeah. us talk yeah. <laughs> about and, uh, stuff and, that happened two years ago. And seeing, you know, uh, what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we already mentioned some in the in the broadcast earlier as we're going through it. Yeah. Uh, and we have got a friend here who's come up with a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. And he was saying about a, uh, a non-prepper, a non-prepper, uh, uh, jumping in at the last minute type of thing, mm -hmm. yeah, getting started. So we have shown some video, which has done excellent job in these, uh, comparisons of certain equipment. Uh, all I would, for what I would say for a non-prepper is as many of the community says already, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only too late if it's already happened. Okay, so there's plenty of videos out there, and they're all different, and everyone's got their own personal opinion mm -hmm. right, of their bare essentials. You know, but you got to think of uh, how you're going to light fire. Yeah, because you're going to need water. Yeah, you're gonna need food. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and to purify water, the best way is fire. Yeah. Unless you want to spend money and you get water purification, uh, water purification tablets. All right. You got it. Uh, yeah, just about. Uh, will help you. But if you don't want to spend money or spend as little as possible, you can buy flint and steel, like uh, a, a, a fire rod. Uh, and now a nice size one which is about 100 mil long and it's 8 mil wide uh, and now 7 8 pounds on eBay. Uh, I buy them for my explorers. Uh, uh, my challenge is if, if they can light a fire inside a minute uh, I'll buy one of these rods for them to use uh, while they're out doing uh, scatings and stuff. Just an idea. Uh, and a good, uh, I wouldn't say all of them, uh, a good majority of them have got their own uh, Faraday rod. Faraday rod? It is Faraday rod. No, it's a Ferocian rod. A, a, ah, you're you thinking go. of Faraday cage <laughs> oh, well. to protect your uh, uh, electronics from uh, EMPs. The, my dyslexic <laughs> brain. But, uh, <laughs> I always going to put something in for them to have a Mickey about. So. so uh, <laughs> So you get the rods. I'm not going to say the names again. Okay. Uh, uh, that would be I think practice, you know, because you get the, it, the, there is a technique of doing it. They, you see all the preppers on the videos, and they go Ch -ch -ch -ch, and done. It's not like, bad at all. It's uh, I can light a fire with about three strikes, but I have done it so many times. My explorers right, are there 15 minutes still trying to light the fire you know, by using it. And I said the exact same thing. Just stand up, don't worry about 
the top and all, don't worry about your kindling, anything like that. Stand up and just practice striking, you know. There's a technique in doing it. So the more times you learn that technique, the better your chances of starting the fire, you know. And uh, so you need something to light the fire. Now if you want it, you could go modern school and have a lighter, but then you're gonna run out eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> a good knife, you know, would be one of your essentials. A bushcraft knife, you can get a, a half decent one for about 30 pounds, yeah. You can go with a branded knife, which both me and uh, Richard got is a Moray knife. Uh, yeah, the uh, Mora Companion. Yeah. Um, pretty much any Mora knife will do you yeah. uh, very well. <coughs> yeah, nice and cheap, but they're still, you know, proper, uh, really good, yeah. uh, premium quality. You can go right to the extreme and buy a Bear Grylls knife, uh, or, or do you know some of the top <coughs> survivalists have these knives, but you're paying for the name. You know, so you're paying a lot more for this. Uh, so you got your wasted light fire, you got your knife, yeah. Next thing would be uh, <coughs> a backpack, I would say. Uh, <coughs> a tarp, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a first aid kit, if you've got any medical issues, you've got to think of that. Mm -hmm. Now, you can buy a basic first aid kit for four pounds in Lidl. Uh, it's a basic first aid kit. It's a start, you know. So, you should be able to get started uh, for less than uh, 50 quid, you know. The dearest thing would be in your knife. You know, you can buy uh, emergency blankets for like a couple of pounds on eBay. You know, what would do for a cover? if you can't afford a tarp. But you can buy a tarp for a pound in Poundland, you know. So these are not good, knocking Poundland, they're not the best quality, mm -hmm. but they will get you out of uh, a sticky situation, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Rich is backpack now, he's a bug out bag. Uh, he's has come a long way uh, and the stuff in there I, I look at, and Max ba uh, bug out bag, uh, or money bags. Uh, I, I look at them and I think, oh, I wish I could get one of those. I wish I could get that. You know, I haven't got the money to buy some of the really nice stuff. You know, uh, but I go for the more practical stuff, and I, I trust in my abilities to make a shelter. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, Having uh, a couple of things I bought recently is the, uh, not the, oh, what's the sax? You know, the, the what? Uh, you know what, uh, the, the sax that you sleep in. Oh, uh, bivy bags? Or... Yeah, bivy bags. Yeah. I bought a couple of bivy bags. Uh, uh, mainly because scouts are going to have a, uh, an, an overnight camp in November. And so I've got a couple of them because I know quite a lot of the scouts are not going to have this. Mm -hmm. But they was quite cheap. They're not going to last uh, for a long time, but it will get you out of this situation. Mm -hmm. And if it, even if it only lasts you three or four months, that's three or four months of experience of doing the bushcraft stuff will make you better at making your shelter. Mm -hmm. And if it starts ripping, that type, you know, uh, Take up the holes. Heck, that that is, you know, one of the main ingredients to my uh, bug out bag at the moment is uh, some of that gorilla tape. Yeah, which so, is one of the best ones to get. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely, and yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've got a surgical sellotape tape uh, uh, because it, it sticks to your skin a lot better than anything else. Super glue in your first aid kit. Believe me, it, it was designed for uh, for injuries in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, to glue up uh, bullet holes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it's loads of stuff that you can get quite cheap will get you out of the situation. So as a newbie, right, get something that will help. You know, if you haven't got anything, then do you know what I mean? And spending like uh, fifty pounds over a course of a year, it's fifty pounds. That's your insurance. You got a, a, a bug out bag. It could even be a kid's school bag, mm -hmm. you know, which you picked up cheap at a second hand shop, you yeah. know, for a couple of pounds. 
it's a bag and you've you, got your minimal amount of supplies in mm -hmm. and then over to a time you think I've got a little bit of money I can upgrade this I can yeah. upgrade that you know I still go out with my 25 litre uh, 35 litre uh, combat bag which is really small and Matt still looks at me like how you get everything in there I don't know you know I don't have everything I like when I look at his like look at his a uh, 50 litre bag or a 60 litre bag and it's like why'd you bring that? What, you, do you know what I mean? And yeah for practicing it is a bit overkill but uh, I think um, uh, I, th I think I do think that there is a, a, a worth in taking out like probably your biggest and heaviest bag and, no. uh, and, and practicing yeah. with that but yeah it's, it goes with what you're comfortable doing mm -hmm. uh, now some of my explorers want to do the extreme camp where they will take out one item uh, and that's all they've got and so we're gonna have to make shelters we're gonna have to make uh, like a sleeping bag uh, type of thing for them to sleep in uh, and that's gonna happen next April because uh, that's what they want to do uh, which is gonna be excellent for me because uh, I can show them really how to survive at wilderness with only one item Bear Grylls does it all the time so well, he doesn't yet. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Bear Grylls is a bad example <laughs> these days. Yeah. But he's a scout leader, so. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. No, no, he, he actually, he genuinely he does, he is. Stuff. He, he genuinely does know his stuff. Yes. He does know his stuff. No, I do like Bear Grylls. So I'm ribbing him, but, you know. Start with the second question? Yeah, well, the first question. Right, so, our friend here uh, has come up with I some questions. I was <laughs> We should keep this in, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so he's done some questions. He come up with some good questions. So there's the questions. You've had to pause and just zoom in. Yeah, I and don't know if uh, they'll be able to, but right. that's all right. There you go. You might be able to see that. But the first question is, how much does a blunt axe cost? Well, they're usually about fifteen pounds from any decent gardening centre, really, because all, all axes come in come yes, blunt. They, when you buy them, they are blunt. You so like the question them. is quite a good I mean, one. I mean, I don't, I don't know why he asked that specific question. I mean, because all axes come blunt when you yeah. buy them, from like a garden centre or like yeah. a tool shop. And it's your responsibility to sharpen it. Up. Yeah, yeah. Right. So the which, which is what I did with mine. Uh, Some people may know uh, that I have. I bought one of these axes and I, I sharpened it, and, and, and nothing else was said about it. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, one question, which was uh, the last, there's three questions here. The third question was put down what should you carry for personal security? Well, that's a tough one to, to say. Hard to talk about. Being yes. in the UK and um, because, being on YouTube as well. Yes. Uh, I just want to point out the law. It is illegal for you to own a firearm. It's illegal for you to carry a, uh, to have a knife longer than longer than three, three inches, inches. And, and you've got to have a reasonable excuse for having that knife on you. Also, but, it has to be foldable, but yeah. not locking. It's also illegal to have mace. It's not mace. Thing that can be used for self defense. It's perfectly legal in the UK. What is it? What is it? Don't smell it. It makes the face all go. It acts like me, but it's perfectly it, legal. Right, so I don't know what these are. <laughs> it looks like a lipstick thing, but it's a similar, something similar to mace, but it's not mace. Uh, but it's apparently okay to use. Yeah. I ordered it off so Amazon. So a, a UK version of pepper yeah. spray. Yeah. <clears throat> But it's not okay. pepper spray. Because uh, pepper so, spray is illegal, so don't get us mixed so, up. Don't get us mixed up. It is now illegal uh, to walk down a street with a bow preloaded. And when I say preloaded, you cannot have the arrow notched onto the bow. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure in time, crossbows will become illegal. Uh, handguns, illegal. Uh, unless you belong to a fire, uh, a, a gun club where you can have your gun, but it's got to be stored in the correct manners. So, to answer to the question, what should you carry? Depends on the situation. 
depends if uh, if there's no law around, then you carry whatever you can and whatever you got. I will say, but uh, be prepared for um, if there is uh, if it's an SHDF scenario where uh, there is a possibility for um, uh, society to come back, then you might end up uh, having to pay for uh, um, crimes that you've committed yeah. uh, uh, during that time. So, uh, and obviously, holding a firearm and yeah. using it, especially, would uh, incur some penalties. So I would, God, be yeah, careful. Yeah. <laughs> I would say be careful because uh, there are firearms out there which uh, gangs and uh, unsavoury characters will be able to get hold of. So you do have to be careful. And also, uh, some uh, police for, uh, the police force have firearms depart uh, the uh, uh, departments and. Obviously, if they get overrun or uh, a mob attacks them, those guns now become in the mob. Uh, so they've got them. Uh, same if uh, the uh, Territory Army uh, or the ar soldier of the army gets uh, brought onto the streets to keep law and order. Again, similar sort of thing. Yes, they have weapons, but in who knows what would happen. Uh, a uh, chemical uh, biological uh, bomb goes off and people will drop dead uh, after a few months people walk in there only dead bodies on the floor but there's weapons on the floor so there's plenty of ways of weapons being uh, out there uh, after certain situations mm -hmm. so you do have to be aware of that so it's something what we can't really talk about what to carry because I'm, I can't indulge. Yeah, we're kind of what dancing you, around the subject. Uh, have yeah. so the last one. How Take much, your own initiative. Yes. Take your own initiative on that one. Uh, how much? Uh, how many days of? Uh, how many? Uh, how many days of food and water should you pack? Well, that depends on your journey. Uh, depends on uh, loads of things. Uh, if your journey is going to take you a month, yeah, you can't carry a month's supply of water because uh, your body needs uh, three litres of water a day, or supposed to need three litres of water a day. Uh, if you're uh, physically active, yeah. yeah. Uh, Which you will be, because you'll, be you'll be walking. Yeah. So you won't, ca if you're walking, you're not going to be able to carry that stuff. If you're in a car, you don't need three litres of water each mm -hmm. day. Uh, so it literally depends, but. This. I can say, uh, I, sorry, uh, no, sir. I can say in my bug up bag, um, and I think in yours as well, like uh, we carry uh, at least two like uh, litre of bottles, like two one litre bottles uh, in each of our bags. Um, but uh, that was when, uh, you know, the plan was like uh, to, hmm. uh, to uh, meet somewhere over here when I was still living over here, uh, and we'd be going by car as well. And also, uh, due to uh, the weight that water brings, um, we would prefer to uh, bring some water, but then uh, have, uh, once that water is expended, we would just go and get more water from yeah. like a stream, stream. purify it. And it's easy enough to purify. <coughs> I say easy enough. Uh, <laughs> if you know how. <laughs> you can uh, distill it, use tablets, you uh, can come up with a concoction, which I generally do, uh, of use, uh, boiling, the water, boiling the water away, but capturing the steam, what uh, turns back into liquid, what drips back into your cup. <laughs> Basically what I would do. Uh, and as the water, what you're gonna be boiling away is potentially dirty water, it doesn't matter how much you use to boil it away, once it turns into steam, it rises up, you capture the steam, and you've got pure water. So, food. Uh, <clears throat> how much food to carry? Again, uh, food weighs down. Okay, uh, food weighs down, uh, and for for us having the the, the supply drops uh, would help us. So we could carry. For, for me, when I leave uh, going out, I would have something like this. Packet of pasta, 
cheapest ones you can get from Asda's. 25p, or well, I think they've gone up to now 32p, but they used to be 25p. Hmm, I wonder why it's all going up. Uh, nice cheap, uh, cheap packet of stock, gives it a bit of flavour, doesn't take up much room. Cup of soups, couple more of those, uh, and that could last me, could last me two days easily. So uh, I've got two days supply of food with just one packet of uh, pasta. Uh, but that will give me time to get to my supply dump where I'd have the extra food uh, to carry on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll use that up. So if I miss one, I can just uh, go straight to the next one and I've got enough there. So that's my little girl showing off. She's been told to do something. Uh, the cup of soup, you can just boil water and just have that. And if you know how to make snares, you can snare some rabbits and cook some rabbit. Uh, trap birds, uh, pigeons. Obviously, the Romans introduced pigeons to uh, the UK when the Romans invaded. Uh, so, squirrels, you know, same thing. Mm -hmm. you, might not, you might not think of this as uh, a luxury food, but it'd be a luxury food in certain circumstances, you know. Well, if you've got nothing else. I prefer to go the slightly more expensive way, uh, just buy a bunch of MRE packs off of uh, Amazon or uh, uh, the slightly more expensive ones like Fuel Your Preparation and uh, um, I can't remember the other one that we got. Uh, it's like hot something. Uh, it's ones we've used before, but uh, they're basically just um, it's like tinned food, but uh, within like a sealed mylar bag. Yeah. Um, I would say it's to, probably about the same weight as that spaghetti. And you're supposed to boil it in the bag. You're supposed to keep the bag the contents in and put the bag in the water and boil it. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, yeah. Uh, just open it a little bit. Um, and not empty the contents out into the mess tin and cook it. Oh, right. Oh, you're referring to that. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I did that one time. I mean, yeah, it was a bit of a clean up, but hey. Um, yeah, uh, so I carry like six or seven of them, uh, seven of them in, my, uh, in my bag. Um, obviously, it's like only one meal per day. Uh, but there's like other stuff that I would have that mm. would accompany it as well. Um, uh, see, you can get like military MREs um, that have like a bit of everything. That they are like literally a day, like a product that's made for uh, one person for an entire day, like a, a, each meal. But uh, these MREs, like I've, I've seen some of them where they're gigantic bags like this and like with big handle and super heavy and. It's like you can't be carrying yeah, that. I mean, like a meal for one day that like that is that size. No, no. no. What Mark just showed you there is uh, it's perfectly adequate, uh, even if you are doing a long walk as well, because a uh, bit of bit of protein and uh, pasta like that uh, is uh, perfect for the workout that you're essentially going to be doing. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so good and bad things about MREs yeah, in uh, that way. So you could go the expensive way by buying MREs. Or you can go a, a cheap ass way, like what I always try and do, uh, to just save yeah. money. And what might not be as tasty, uh, but it, it does the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, if you're on a, by the coast, there's uh, cockles, winkles, uh, sort of like, uh, you can try and get some fish. Uh, it all depends how good you are at fishing. Uh, so there's plenty of food naturally around. Depending on the type of year, there's yeah. berries, apples, you know. Notice uh, that we're not saying anything about going, like, uh, raiding into shops and stuff, because needless to say, that would just be too dangerous uh, with all the people around. Like we mentioned earlier about London, like, 7 million people. Yeah. Imagine all the people flocking to supermarkets. Yeah, mm -hmm. better so, just go natural. Yeah, obviously, in if it all went to pot, and in 10 years' time, uh, the, uh, the world population would be vastly diminished and if as a good successful prepper you survived 10 years which being a good successful prepper we will uh, <laughs> we will uh, uh, <laughs> you will come across abandoned places uh, <coughs> it's a abandoned place 
you know, uh, for the people who owned it are not around, uh, their next of kin might not be around, uh, the electricity in the place is not going to be working, so their security is not going to be, uh, security cameras are not going to be on. <laughs> you, do what you, need, you do what you need to do to survive, you know, 10 years in the, uh, down the road. Uh, and believe me, seeing a car, don't go to the oil tank and see if there's oil in it because it's going to be off. You know, the oil in cars, ten years down the road, is, you're not going to be able to use it. You know, so watching all these zombie movies, right, and it's been years later and they siphon off some petrol, <laughs> it's Hollywood. It, it's not going to work. Yeah, it, it does have a use by date. There's a surprising amount of people that don't realise that fuel has a, yeah. a, a yeah. use by date like that. Yeah. They just assume that, oh, there's a car there, let's jump in and drive it. And like a, There's also a thing, we're talking about 10 years of time in the future here, like a car that's not moved for 10 years, it would have seized up. Rusted. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It started deteriorating as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cobwebs. If you're scared of spiders, yeah, you know. beware of spiders. That's the yeah. worst problem that uh, you'll find. So, yeah, there'll be loads of creepy corners, which you can eat. Yeah, well, <laughs> you might not want to, but you can eat it. Yeah, uh, protein, need it. And Klaus, I'm going to say his name wrong, but I don't care. Klaus Swaps. Hello. Oh, Ten years time, you could be eating the very stuff what you're promoting. Yeah, and there won't be nothing else for you. <laughs> Yum. Mm. Eerie weeks. Earwigs. <laughs> oh, no thanks. Uh, no. So, uh, should we talk about uh, or oh, what things are happening yeah. right now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with the mention of Klaus, Klaus Schwab, yes. however you say his name. Yes, yeah, him. Uh, well, he you know, might get his own way in unifying Europe and uh, becoming one great nation. Yay! Uh, uh, they are going down the road of becoming a super nation yeah. uh, by uh, saying that all countries can't have a veto now. Well, I know it's not him, but he's uh, yeah. the puppets, the, the actual puppet, puppet the, the puppets, what he's the puppet master, uh, they're all saying what he wants to say. Uh, you've got uh, that happening, obviously, uh, the banks. Uh, changing now, which we've we got a link for you. Got a video <coughs> there, yeah. Uh, the banks have uh, re, uh, redone their terms and conditions. And that, this is not, no joke. It's a small clause which someone spotted, and it says uh, on the long the words of, you've, which we pointed out, uh, <laughs> that in certain circumstances, where uh, it's in a crisis, the banks can take your money, basically. Uh, and you would have a set limit, what you can have. If you are over that, it would all be theirs, or they will charge you. Now, the only way they will charge you is if you're one of the rich elite, and they say, well, we, you, we're gonna charge you, you're not gonna lose it. But for us mere mortals, if there's a 10 grand limit, and you've got 11 or 50 grand saved up in your bank account, well, you're gonna lose it. That's the way it reads. But only if the banks are in crisis, you're gonna bail the bank out. So, oh my God. so, so basically, that's so what it not, is. It's it not is. the government. So before the problem was the government bailing out all these yeah. banks, but now it's well, gonna be the good old the people. people. The, pe the people yeah. bailed out them last time. Yeah. All right, but they kept their money. This time you're going to lose your money oh. to bail out the bank, which is incompetent enough to make all these bad decisions. All right. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, yay, banks! <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Why do we keep uh, using banks? Is it just because of the interest that we can get? On it? Like, why not just keep <clears> all of our money? I must seem like a right idiot here, but why not just keep all of our money underneath our mattress? Or uh, well, yeah. because. They don't want that. And they entice you, you with 1% interest, but only on savings above a certain amount. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, they entice you with like tricking you into it's good to, it's safe 
look how many bank robbers rob banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the biggest criminals are not the bank robbers, they're just trying to get a living, right? It's the people in the banks themselves that are bank robbers, you know, because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. The, ba the banks are the bank robbers because yeah. they are bank and they are robbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, are, although I'm not sure, so sure about the bank robbers. Uh, being, and I'm not pointing out anyone in particular. Them, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> oh, it's my living. I go and bank robbers. Uh, I, I rob banks for my living. That's yeah. how I make a living. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at China, uh, they're going through a very bad time at the moment. Not only did they create a, a virus, oh, did I say create a virus? No, sorry. They created a problem. Yeah. In the past, uh, what went global, and now they're having another issue where, with their banking industry, which is affecting the rest of the world. Uh, and they've already limited the amount of money what their people who can take out uh, to peanuts, really. Uh, and they're spending, they're closing down uh, cash point machines where saying there's no money in them. Uh, but yeah. And our friend is like, yeah. <laughs> Got a question? No. no? no? Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, how is how is what's <laughs> happening in China uh, going to affect us over here? Do you think? Uh, okay. If China's banks collapse, yeah, uh, it would have a knock-on effect because it would have uh, a shockwave through the stock market. Now, for you and me, we don't have shares, but for your pension, yeah, the banks, they all have shares and stocks and stuff like that. Uh, and that would just take a nosedive. Yeah. So your pension now is worthless. Okay. That, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but we didn't say we were going to go into a pandemic. Yeah. But this is, you know, if you look at all the signs, this is the signs what's happening. Warning signs. Warning signs. So. The banks in China collapse, so they start recouping money. Uh, where do they recoup the money from? From their subsidiary banks. And you're going to say, oh, what bank in the UK? HSBC is owned by the Chinese banks. So that's one. And I'm sure there's other ones, which is like under the radar. Because mm. HSBC also owns other banks as well. Uh, Thing. There's some internet banks that are owned by them as well. So the banks over here will come under a lot of pressure sending money back to support their parent companies uh, because if the parent company goes wallop, they go wallop. You know, uh, so it's a lot of pushing money around to save uh, the parent company. Uh, so you got that crisis. <coughs> also. We buy everything from China, you know. Your your car what's made in France, or your car what's or your washing machine what's made in Germany, uh, your batteries what are made in England, yeah, all buy parts from China. And if China, just like in the pandemic, where nothing was going out, there's a short uh, shortage of supplies over here. And the same thing would happen again. If the if the global economy crashes from the banks, you would be going through another Great Depression, where uh, people uh, back in the last one, the Great Depression, uh, people really suffered. They starved because they couldn't afford food. Mm -hmm. uh, prices of everything will go up, uh, just like prices are going up now because the uh, so-called uh, gas prices, uh, which really, really baffles me in the UK. Right? Uh, they say that the gas prices are going up because of the war in Ukraine, and we don't buy from Russia. Yeah. Okay. But our gas supplies for the UK is only something like five percent bought from Russia. Germany and France, their supply from Russia is a lot higher. But their gas prices are a lot lower. Mm. So it doesn't make sense to me. We buy less, but our gas prices are a lot higher from a country who buys more. Do, 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 do you yeah. understand? 
So the prices have gone up because of the war, and we're not buying it from them. Mm. You know, nor is France and France, do you know what I mean? So they have to buy in a lot more gas to yeah. make up the difference, but their gas price is nowhere as high as our ones. So, and now it's like, like in our local area, uh, the local government's turned around and said, we're going to do away with your coal fire. The way you used to be able to heat your house, you can't do no more. We're going to put in electric. Oh, thanks. You know, or we're putting gas. <laughs> Are they stupid? The local governments putting in gas heaters and gas uh, fires when there's a shortage of gas. It's bonkers. You know, Jan, the thing that gets me, we elected them to come up with this bird brain of an idea of doing this. You know, next time when you come to that voting poll, ask them if they voted this, if they passed this bill to go through all communities. Everyone's got to put gas eaters in and stuff. Because it's like, they shouldn't be elected in a position of power if they can't do their jobs. I know you've got to go on face value because they say the right things. Of course, that, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, what else is happening? Uh, magnetic pole shift still happening. Uh, about seven months to go before it gets to the 40 degree mark. And we don't know what's going to happen then. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, well, what's that? This trust. This trust is Prime Minister. Don't know yet. Oh right, don't know yet. What about her? Which one? Oh, oh what, which one? Trust. Trust. Yeah, well. Right. Because she's got more bollocks than Sunni. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's saying something, you know. She's got more gonads. Yeah. Is the better way of saying it, I suppose. Yeah, maybe. You know. And oh, forgive me. You're gonna get put someone in charge. Right, who's put us into debt over the last three years and you're going to put that person in charge of the country he will sell us to China if he could he will go around and get his uh, I don't know special fried rice and chicken balls and say yeah you can have England that would be a fair trade off I'm sure he would do that He's, and he was a financial advisor before and he couldn't he, it just puts him more debt. That's not a very good financial advisor. But again, he wants the, the global elite want that to happen. Klaus Schwartz. Do you know the thing? What I noticed. I'm changing the subject here. Sorry. Right. There was an advert. <laughs> right. Klaus. Klaus Schwartz. Was whatever his name is. Right. Own nothing. Be happy. That backfired on him back then. Right. Because no one liked the idea of only nothing and being happy. Well, everyone wants to be happy, but only nothing. Now I see advertisements for renting your car, <coughs> leasing your car. <coughs> you don't buy your car anymore. You lease it, right? And you always like you get the uh, things. Well, we buy any car. Great little company buys all your old cars, forces you to buy a new one or lease. Uh, now it's we buy any item. It's like. Mm -hmm. They're buying up your items in your house. Who want? What company is going to want to buy your old, uh, I don't know, coffee machine? Who's going to buy it? Of course, it goes into their thing. Don't buy a coffee machine. They're too expensive. Rent one instead. You can ring us up and we deliver. When you're finished with it, ring us up and we'll take it away. So they're trying to lean towards the the kind of subscription service model, which the world has been. Yeah like a uh, kind of uh, tra trained to now like uh, or prefer because uh, obviously like convenience yeah like s it streaming is. services yeah. subscription uh, music services uh, subscription uh, people are uh, watching less and less uh, proper TV uh, so the TV license is pretty much going out as well and uh, yeah it's like like everyone is just it's like they're trying to say like oh hey it's like having like a, a Netflix subscription but for a coffee machine yeah. isn't that crazy that's so good isn't it yeah that's why don't you do that that's what they do uh, now I know before you know it you don't own anything there'll be hundreds of people saying that ah that's conspiracy right get your tin hat well I can, I've got some tin foil I can put a tin foil hat on right 
all I want to say is look at our history of what we've done. You know, we're just giving you examples of what could happen and what is likely to happen. Uh, we said about prepping for all different types of things. Mm -hmm. We said about pandemics and we've gone through a pandemic. We're going into a monetary collapse. Believe me, things will get hard. This is going to be a winter of sorrow. You know, uh, as the famous TV series and the famous book, Winter is Coming. And boy, is it coming for us. You know, it's uh, going to be a bad one. Cost of fuel, cost of coal, cost of heating, everything's going up. Uh, I've been doing a price comparison. I started buying five pounds worth of food. <coughs> and <coughs> I started that four months ago. And what I will do is when I do the next one next week, I'll bring up the two, uh, I'll do another video uh, showing the comparisons and what the items are buying. And already that five pounds in four months, three, three, three months, four months now, I don't get the same items anymore. I can't. I go over the five pound. And I just wanted to see if prices were going up as fast as I thought they was. And It'd got... be interesting if you keep buying the same items over an um, extended period of time and just keep all the receipts and see exactly how much everything's going yeah. up every yeah, time. Yeah, I'll do that. Because I've got, so, that. I've got so, my first one. Yeah, so. so you could say like, oh, at this date, this was five pounds. But then at this date, now this is like eight, seven or eight pounds. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's, very good. It's gone up. Uh, used to buy, uh, the items what I've got <clears throat> is I just wanted to do like a basic meal. Uh, and it was like pastas and obviously some stuff that I've already showed you. Uh, but it is that sort of thing where you can't buy the same thing for £5 again. Yeah. You know, it's just gone over. So yeah. I have to sacrifice yeah. one thing if I've only got £5. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for people with uh, who are very stra strapped for yeah. cash, I mean, that would make shopping very difficult. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, so I suppose we should talk about the war. Yeah, I mean, that is something that has happened that we haven't really touched upon on the no. channel because we haven't <clears throat> been uploading recently, but... Um, There's... Yeah. There were, I... Well, I was in two minds, and I'll be honest. Uh, now, this is not going to go down with a few other prepper channels. Uh, I disagreed with the channels what come up to Russia's gonna nuke us all basically they were scaremongery uh, and I thought should I go on and be talking about it or should I just ignore it and I chose to ignore it even though it's a major thing and it is affecting everyone around the world now uh, with prices of fuel <clears throat> but uh, there was the very first week, there was other prepper channels saying, this is going to go into a nuclear war. Be prepared. You want to buy these, buy that. And it's like, oh my, it's the same rhetoric over and over again. Uh, and we're, we're not that type of channel. You know, and I know for people listening to this in their cars or with their work, uh, they're going to be enjoying some of the things I say. It's like, hello, wake up other channels stop scaremongering you're worse than the government you really are uh, Ukraine the war in Ukraine yes it's a first major war <clears throat> uh, modern war that we've had in a long time and all the threats and camaraderie what is coming out right we don't know for sure uh, what Putin's gonna do yeah but one thing I can I'm not going to say safely say, because it's time to jinx it, but if he knows that if he starts a nuclear war, other countries will get involved. And he doesn't want to escalate the situation. He's, he's hoping to either take all of Ukraine, yeah, uh, or take the portions what he wants, which got all a uh, gas supply underneath uh, the land, and do it like he did in Crimea, in Georgia. Uh, he wants to localize it and just do that. You know, uh, there was there was quite a lot of reasons why he went in. Uh, 
obviously Crimea uh, was running out of water. You know, not people, not many people know that their supply of water comes from Ukraine. You know, and so obviously they cut the supply off. <laughs> so if anyone would, it's a foreign national country who's just taken part of your land, cut the water supply off. You're not saying to the people there that they're not welcome to come back into Ukraine, but obviously that's what happened. So obviously now Russia's moved into a position where the water supply is back on. Now I did hear, last I heard was the Ukrainians are doing an offensive in that area. As soon as they get that control of that dam, they will switch off that water supply again, you know, and Crimea will be uh, running out of water, you know, and Putin can't supply them enough water. So I'm not saying that's one of the reasons why he went in, but it's, it's one of the factors what helped them now. Uh, and all the help what uh, Ukraine's getting uh, from the Western world, uh, the, apart from Germany sending them uh, World War II equipment, what didn't work, uh, <coughs> everyone else is sending them quite modern stuff. Uh, and it's helping them. Uh, it's, it has stopped Putin in, in the north, uh, but that's just overstretching, you know. Uh, he just overstretched too much. He tried to open up too many fronts. Mm -hmm. Belarus, there's talks about them joining in. Uh, that would be more of a, a tender spot, I would say, if they join in and something happens in Poland. And Russia could just step back and say, nothing to do with us, we're not invading from there. That's Belarus. And you'll find that uh, if NATO, because obviously Poland has been hit by Belarus, right? NATO was sort of going to Belarus, Russia could stand back and say, we didn't say to go in, nothing to do with us. They will carry on in Ukraine, Belarus has a problem with NATO, you know, but hopefully not, mm. you know, but there's, so when a, a large force invades, uh, they, they have to do it quick, you know, they need to subdue uh, everything, you know, and they've not done that. Uh, because the thing what uh, would uh, disrupt a larger force, America saw it in Vietnam, and, uh, uh, we saw it in Afghanistan, your supply lines can get hit and hit and hit. And you can't police a thousand mile road you know, for it not to be hit. Uh, Night time is when people move around because they can't be seen. Uh, so, it's hard for an invading army to maintain their momentum if they take too long. Uh, so, yeah. so I didn't put anything up because I don't think it's going to go into a World War Three. Uh, but we already covered if World War Three happens, roughly what to do. You see, we had a little bit of shift around. Uh, my little girl wanted to uh, get into the picture. Uh, so. The weather patterns are all changing, which in my theory is to do with the uh, magnetic uh, pole reversal or pole shift. Uh, that's my theory. Uh, I'm not a scientist to back it up, but uh, it does have some merit. Uh, yeah. uh, and I've been very busy with my own personal life. Uh, so I haven't really been uh, looking into pretty much anything. Um, so <laughs> that's pretty much why uh, Mark has just been talking at this point because this is pretty much all new information to me and I've just been listening to him. Um, people might think like, oh, uh, uh, not being a very good prepper if you're not keeping up with current events, but that's what I got Mark here for. Yeah, I've just been a bit concerned with other stuff at the moment. Uh, so yeah. Hey, uh, if there's nothing else to mention, would that yeah. be a place to finish? It certainly could be a good place. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> on behalf of uh, me and my family and the rest of your friends mm. in Northern Ireland, we wish you a safe journey back to England. Don't be a stranger. We're only at the end of a phone call or oh, yes. uh, Skype or, you know, and you're always welcome when you come over to stay at our place. 
you know. Well, thank uh, you, thank you. And uh, the same, same to you as well, same to you wherever maybe. I may yeah. end up in England. Uh, it's <clears throat> doing this channel with you, and this channel, don't get us wrong guys, we will be doing carrying on the channel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there might be a disrupt in videos, but mm -hmm. I'm, obviously I went through a bit of a, some health problems, so I wasn't getting out and about, but uh, I'm a lot better. So I'll be uh, doing some videos and I'll be sending them over to Rich mm -hmm. uh, for him to upload. Get them edited uh, up and uploaded. Yeah. Uh, and we might try and do a, might be a weird campfire talk where we're both together. Yeah. But uh, we could, uh, might be able to do it where we do it on the same day. We record, uh, like, have a, like, do a, a Skype video to each other and record each other. Okay, yeah, well, so we're, we're both out both out in yeah. a forest somewhere, but yeah. so we're both out in different forests across yeah. two different countries, so, so that would be pretty cool. Yeah, we, we can do that, and they oh, both have cool. two fires, so you'd have me with one campfire, yeah. Rich with another campfire, both That's talking, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, be up for through that. the phone, but recording ourselves doing that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, hey, it, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's been a real pleasure working with you, doing this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it's been great. Same to you, my man. It's Same to you. Great. you know. Wouldn't have started without you. And I wouldn't have done and it without you. I would have just carried <laughs> on being the like the prepper on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, and hey, uh, that said, I mean, like it's uh, your whole reason uh, why I even started prepping in the first place, as I said on this channel uh, before. So, uh, um, I mean, you gave me a reason uh, to want to protect my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's just going to be a different uh, sort of family. Well, it's going to be my blood family, but uh, you're you're my other family, as yes. I like to say. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, going back over to England, it's uh, it means I've got uh, different people that I want to protect mm -hmm. uh, to the best and of my will. ability. And yes. we will. And yes. We will. Cool. Already. So, yes. So, <laughs> so this uh, last one. Well, the last one for the immediate future. Mm -hmm. Us being together. Yes. So, keep practicing, keep safe. Yeah, uh, get out there. Yeah, get out there and do it. Get it done. And we'll be, so we'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah, in whatever form yeah. or format it may be, we will see you soon. We will get this done again. And when I come and visit, we'll do another one of these mm. uh, together. We'll do it properly. Yeah, but yeah, in the bush somewhere. Indeed. But I can see at dinners. Uh, uh, my wife just pointed to that. Dinner's done, yes. so we're going to go in for a nice Sunday lunch. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. Cannot wait. Already then. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. We've been newbie prepping. If you want to give this video a like and uh, uh, want to subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. And uh, I've been Rich. And uh, it's me, Mark. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>